Welcome to Self-Directed. We're your hosts, Cecilia and Jesper Conrad, and today's guest is Amrit Sandhu. Uh, today we have uh, invited Amrit, the host of the popular podcast called Inspired e Evolution, where he has done more than 200 episodes. And we have been honored to be guests there. He also have created an online course called Launch Your Podcast, From Idea to iTunes. And we have taken this course and now you're here, and it's one of our first guests. So welcome. <laughs> it is such a pleasure and such a gift to be here. Thank you so much for A, having me, and then also B, launching your podcast, using the Launch Your Podcast. Uh, yeah. We talked about Long it trip. for years. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly because I remember when we wanted to go further outside the box yeah. than we already were, there was not mm. a lot. There's not a lot. Of, now it's exploding, but back then, if I wanted to learn how life is for other people out there, I, I, I had like two or three blogs to follow and one mm. little podcast and, and it was all American and yeah, no offense, but we're not Americans and, and we don't live in the States. So mm. our conditions and options and maybe obstacles are different. You so know, I totally now resonate it's... with what you're saying because when I first, oh, sorry, I interrupted. No, 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 no. Please go ahead. Yeah, just when, 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 I, when I first started my podcast, it was much the same. Like I had actually had a, a friend of community, like a bunch of community here. And, you know, over time we learn what our medicine is and mine is connecting people is one of my, one of my medicines. And, you know, there's all this amazing community around me. We brought them all together and they were just having these amazing conversations in my home every fortnight. And they were like, you should start a podcast. And I was like, oh. And I checked out a couple of podcasts and again, nothing against Americans, but the American podcasts that I was choosing, tuning into were like, um, the expert, listen to me, yeah. you know? And yeah. it was very like, I'm <laughs> the eternal humble student. <laughs> yeah. no, don't listen to me, maybe, you know, let me learn. And it was, mm -hmm. yeah, I found it, um, culturally there was, because at the time I think the sort of pinnacle of podcasting was in America and it still is driven a lot by American culture in terms of the free media movement that they basically started through podcasting because the podcast came from the iPod, Steve Jobs, Apple, all of that. Yeah. yeah. The uptake was greatest there, but I think now it's, you know, spread all around the world. And, you know, I think more and more people start exploring the medium for what it truly can be, which is just a free expression of your own deepest desires and thoughts and opinions. And which and is amazing. It is it's amazing. Isn't it? And, and yeah. the Americans make amazing podcasts. I list, yes. listen to American podcasts. Po yeah. I can't speak. Podcasts yeah. uh, <laughs> every week. Yeah. It's not that I mind, but I just think in, in the whole choir of it, we need something that comes from other angles. Of course. So of course. that was why we talked about it and we talked about it and we talked about it for years. And now we do it. And now we do it. And that is <laughs> what uh, was the click? What was the moment that went? You always wanted to sort of do it, but then there was a moment where something just tipped over, and it was like, "Yep, I'm I, I'm doing it." It went from "I'm gonna do it" to "I did it." What was the tip? The the final tip, the first tip. There is more than one. Uh, was actually yeah. the talk we had with you after our, the podcast episode we did you with you, and after oh, we finished the recording. <laughs> and he was like, uh, Cecilia said, okay, yes, well, let's, let's do it. Let's take this launch your podcast program he has and actually get started. So um, now we have to ask Emmett questions. Yeah, well, he has the question. Will, the will, no, no, right let's, now. Let's, let's not into it, but I will, I will answer. <laughs> but then the, the, what finally ticked it was that I read the, the book uh, Hook Points by Brendan Kane, who was also made mm. with another book called One Million Followers in 30 Days. And yeah. in that book, he writes, um, I say yes to podcast interviews, no matter how big they are. So I was yeah. like, okay, let's test him. Uh, so I wrote to mm -hmm. him, hey, uh, we have a podcast. Uh, I would like to interview. And it, it was just sending an arrow out there in the universe. And then yeah. he responded, I can do this in this state. And I was like, we <laughs> you hooked the hook point. <laughs> you hooked yeah. the hook point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, now we need to create that podcast. <laughs> so, Fantastic. But but Fantastic. but so it, it it was actually it just needed to happen, and mm. at some point we we took the idea and uh, made it happen. But we want mm. to ask you questions, Amrit. <laughs> and Please. one of them is, I, I would love to hear more about how it started. You you said a word I didn't quite. Uh, heard about what kind of person you are what did you mm. call it yeah so connecting people a connector no, but before so that what do you call the word 
you are a um as in myself i, th- I said my medicine is so your medicine yeah that's why why, why you yeah my medicine so i think actually you know and you know, you read it off the bio, like everybody, I believe everybody has medicine in them. Everybody has a gift in them. Everybody has a strength um, that they're put here for, you know? Um, and oftentimes I think we walk around sort of in the shadow of, yeah, like, I don't want to say it this way, but oftentimes, and I wouldn't say oftentimes, I'm just going to pick a number out of the air, but I would say about 80% of the time people are living in the shadow of what society projects on them that they want to be. Yeah. society wants them to be um and that's culturally influenced by the place you live the family that brings you up and all that sort of stuff there's all these layers upon layers upon layers of people with their best best interest you know um but still sort of navigating you the uh i don't want to say the wrong way but not the way that's most aligned to you there's a, one of my favorite quotes is the alan watts <laughs> saying where he goes uh please let me help you said the monkey scooping the fish out of the river into the tree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, I think everybody has their way, as you guys have your way, right? Yeah. <laughs> like very mm-hmm. following your own path. And it's, as you know, it's off the beaten path. It's not the norm. I think we share no. um, that perspective on life as well and yeah. potentially some of the influences that sort of, yeah, it's hard to find the right languaging around it. It's it's somewhat insidious. It's somewhat derailing, but it's not that sinister. It's just society needed to find a way in some ways, and these are the ways that it's found. But it makes us more cookie cutter, and very you know of a uniform sort of taste. When really we are all unique expressions, and I feel like everybody has a unique thing to provide to life. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. There is a reason that you're here. So we have something a lot in common, but one thing I think mm. about right now is, so you made 200 podcasts and you, you're, you're like off the, the part of the, what do you call it? Like outside the box kind of, yeah. yeah. And, and live in a, in a radically different way than what you could call most people. And so do we very often when we give our speeches and, And at the end, then sometimes it seems like the distance between the life I live now and the life of the people I talk to has become so big that they kind of give up. It's like, yeah, Yeah. you you got out, but I have no way to get out. That's kind of their conclusion, which makes me very sad. So how can we, how do you, what do you do to get closer or to like make a bridge on that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So coaching is a big part of what I love doing. Um, so this question that you're asking is very ripe in the intimate sort of setting of coaching one-on-one um, where you're trying to facilitate transformation. And uh, actually it's interesting with facilitating transformation because sometimes it's necessary to zoom all the way out and show people how high the mountaintop is. And then sometimes you've literally got to get down on your knees and tie their shoelaces for them so that they can take the very next step, right? So the dynamic between the two is the range is huge. Now, the short answer that I would offer into your space would be, um, to your question would be, there's, I I just take it from marketing. So at the moment when, you know, this was about a decade ago, they used to say with marketing in order for someone to buy something from you, let's just get as gluttonous as as marketing and buying buying psychology, right? People needed to buy something, they would needed to connect to the concept or their brand or the energy of it four times. Yeah, so they needed four touch points before they would make a buying decision. Either yes, either no, they needed to be exposed to it four times. That's how billboards worked. You're driving past it, you didn't even see it, but in your subconscious it went past, so they know that they've made an extra touch point, right? Yeah. So those were the four points. And it was this is probably outdated information now, but about five odd years ago, I remember this being one of the facts that I read up on was it's now it was at that point 17 touch points. Right now you can sort of there's a whole bunch of myriad reasons of why that has gone up, probably mm-hmm. because we're saturated with media and information, right? Obviously, but nonetheless, yeah. it's 17 points. So that's just marketing. Now, when you talk about, you know, the lifestyles that you guys live, the different sort of ideologies that I contain and, you know, trying to inspire evolution, trying to, you know, literally nomad traveling around the world. Yes, it's different. And yes, there is a bit of an onus on us to, you know, try to share our story with others so that it can impact others. But the reality is I rest in the knowing that if I can do it for me, yeah, yeah, One of my favorite quotes is this Marianne Williamson quote where she goes, once we liberate ourselves from our fears, we unconsciously liberate others. 
Yeah. So if I can live my best life, if I can go away and do the things that I am limited by and believe that, you know, I am limitless and try and actualize some of those things, which really bring me the greatest joy, but it's just my fears standing in the way. Yeah. If I can work through that stuff and get out on the other side and be like, Hey, I can do it. You can do it too. And I may share my story. And in that audience, one person may be hearing such a story for the first time. Another person may be hearing it for the 17th time and that might be the exact time oh, yeah, yeah. that they tumble over and transform. Someone's hearing it for the fourth time. Someone's hearing it for the sixth time. Sixth time. So resting in the knowing that the ripple effect is occurring and that each person is on their journey and they're coming along and that they're going to transform in their right time as well and that you are still contributing to their transformation, right? But it may not look like from the outside what you want it to look like right here and right now, but trusting in that the universe has its ways with such things. I personally trust exactly the same. And mm -hmm. I've said for years, the best thing we can do is we do it and we do what we believe is right. And it's very, very different. Before we started traveling, we also like didn't put the kids to oh, school yes. and did weird stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I truly believe it that you impact a lot of people just by not even doing the podcast, not even sharing the story, just doing it because mm -hmm. there's someone doing it and, and, and you, you see it on the bus kind of. So mm -hmm. yes, ripple effect, but I am still interested in how you react to this question when it comes like, or this people saying, yeah, but for me, it's impossible. I hear that a lot. And I, I suppose maybe you hear it too. So you share your story or you share, yes, you can, you can get rid of, of the limitations. You can get closer to who you really are. You can, you can start living a better life, a freer life, more mm, conscious life. And then the response to me often is, you can do it, Cecilia, but I, I can't. I'm, I'm too stretched by things or constrained by economy or f whatever health issues or so do you meet that question or is it just my i meet that question it seems less than you do because obviously okay. i have the ecosystem of the inspired evolution and the people that tune in have tuned into the podcast and followed along for a certain amount of the journey and like are ready to transform by the time they reach out to me to go, hey, like I'm ready. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Are we ready to go? I'm like, yes, we're ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So it's almost like that question is interfaced by the person that is tuning into the podcast for the first time. Yeah. And that almost does the sort of, hey, like, you know, warming them up to like, hey, you can transform, hey, you can transform, hey, you can transform. It probably does all that heavy lifting for me, which I do like I do recall, you know, and I still go, like still deliver seminars and there are people that are less inclined to change than others. Um, but it's also, you know, this was one of the things that I had to learn early on, especially, you know, being in transformation and personal development is that everybody's got their own timing. Everybody's got their divine timing. And this comes back to what you like, you know, your, your question in terms of if someone comes up to me and goes, Hey, like it's all well and good for you to do this. But <clears throat> this is, there is no way in hell that I could, you know, be a coach or be a speaker or be a this or be a that. My honest truth is you're probably not. You're probably not a coach. You're probably not a speaker. You're probably not an author. My honest truth is it's mindset, period. If you say it's impossible, it's impossible. You're right. You'll be right no matter what. If you yeah, say it's so there is, there is that piece. If you say it's impossible, then you're right. It's just I Absolutely. disagree, you know. I disagree with impossible personally. Yeah. But also when we drill deeper, what I generally are, like the first place we sort of start on a journey with myself is we get really clear on your values. Yeah. yeah. I find values really helpful because what happens is it's kind of where the 3D meets, meets the spiritual, but it's yeah. also, it's, it doesn't come across that esoteric when it's like, what are your values? Organizations have values. People have values. What value do you bring me? How can I exchange? Like value is a very 3D term, but it is actually quite um, a spiritual concept when you, when the way I look at it anyway. Um, so then when we start looking at our values, my values, yeah, my highest values are connection, contribution, and celebration. 
Yeah, these are my three highest values. Mm -hmm. Now that I, like, there's a whole bunch of others in there, but those are my three highest values. So when I start looking at connection, contribution, celebration, let's have a look at what podcasting does. Podcasting, I connect with people all over the world, such as yourself, and I'm connecting to an audience. Yeah, so I get to connect on steroids. (laughs) Yeah, contribute, it's helping other people, others grow, evolve. It's inspiring some people to start their own podcast. So there's a massive contribution there. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's doing its own thing. Then there's celebration. Hopefully people are living life more fully, more richly, you know, and they're celebrating their life even better, more, like even more vibrant, right? Because they've tuned into this podcast. So podcasting, my three highest values tick. Coaching, I'm connecting to people really deeply, like in a really intimate setting, right? They're telling me stuff they don't even tell their wives or their parents or their children, stuff they've always wanted to get off their chest, right? So that's connection. Contribution, that space is affording them a lot, yeah? Then there's celebration. They're living life freer because of it, yeah? Public speaking, connecting to audiences, contributing with the content, celebrating life. So those are my values. So absolutely, when you look at podcasting, when you look at this conversation, you're like, Amrit's, you know, touch wood, hopefully you guys think I'm reasonably good at this. I've worked, like you said, a lot on myself to try and come here. But those are my values. And I've watered those values. And I've gone, yep, these are my values. And I'm going to continue to double down on my strengths, right? And Mm -hmm. walk that path. Now, your values are probably adventure, right? Like one of your massive values between the pair of you is probably going to be adventure. Now, so yeah. if I turn around, like I could turn around to you and say, hey, like what you guys do is nomads traveling around the world. I can't do. And I probably can't, yeah, because I'm probably risk adverse. Now, that doesn't mean that I should be able to do it. No, my values are different. Yeah, yeah. But if I get clear on my values, what I can say is that everybody has a divine right to follow through on exactly who they are and your values are, and, you know, part of me, I'm Indian, so it sounds a bit loaded when I say this, but the values are the temp- like the pillars of the temple that is you, yeah? And you can live by your values. You don't have to have a temple that has broken pillars, that's tumbled, the ceiling's on the floor, yeah? You can erect your values and erect your temple and live your life with the energy just flowing through freely, yeah, that is the dream, living in alignment to really what your soul's purpose is here and now. And your values really help you discern that. So, you know, in when people say, oh, I can't do what you do, and it's like, maybe you're not meant to. Yeah, but your thing is a thing. You have your own medicine. You have your own reason for being here. You have your own calling. That much is certain within me, yeah? And the reason I'm that bloody certain about it is there was a moment in my life when I struggled for depression for six years. And I don't wish it upon my worst enemy yet. Yeah? No. It's a long during, time. <laughs> and during the recovery period, there was someone, touch wood, yeah, who believed in me when I couldn't even believe in myself. I wasn't necessarily suicidal, but I was apathetic. I was completely apathetic. Whether I was here, whether I wasn't here, didn't matter. Yeah. 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 Completely numb it's on that so- recovery journey. Mm-hmm. And there was a person in my life that saw me and said, I believe in you. I see you. You're worth it. Keep going. And that just when you don't believe in yourself and someone does and it actually pulls you through to the other side, what that does for you, I cannot give you words except that I have dedicated my life to coaching because I believe in the power of others Mm. because I know how much of a gift it is because it transformed me. Yeah. Mm. And so I believe everybody has something. Everybody has medicine. Even that challenging time, the, med- the six years of depression brought me to meditation, which completely changed my awareness, the way I navigate life. It was totally a cocooning experience in which the butterfly spread its wings. Obviously, you can only see that with hindsight. When you're going through your challenges, it's very, I was going to swear, it's very hard to see yeah. it that way. Yeah. But with hindsight, you start to realise. You answered some of you said in your podcast uh, course, um, prepare some questions and you actually throw them out. I haven't reached that point late yet. Mm. <laughs> so I skipped them and I was like, ah, he answered that, he answered that, he answered that. But one <laughs> thing I would like to uh, go a little deeper with is the, the start of your podcast. You talked a little about it when we, after our dialogue last time. You started in your living room, just inviting people, connecting people, and had some talks. Can you tell a little about that? Because I'm like, yeah. from Denmark, people like to drink a lot when they're together, and there the conversation <laughs> seems to, you know, go <laughs> go outside mm. the realm, and yeah. not so. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
like intellectual <laughs> conversations over expensive wine with my friends. Yeah, so, but I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there must no, be a difference between what they put in wine and what they put in beer, Jesper. It could be the weed also. <laughs> yeah. So um, for me, the mm. um, the yeah, thank you so much for remembering. So the um, the inspired evolution journey is you know it's been a long journey actually, but in some ways I can't believe it's only like it's it's been like this. It's almost like parenting in some ways. It's pretty trippy. But, How um, many the, years have we on now? Uh, five years of the Inspired Evolution five years. now. Yeah, okay. five years, cool. which, you know, the things that have already happened are like beyond my wildest dreams. Um, yeah, I definitely had a plan. But then also I know I give myself 10 years to sort of see where this is actually going. I'm, I've sort of wisely, I don't know where this dropped in. Initially when I started, I was like, I'm not going to measure performance for 10 years. I'm just going to commit myself and sort of see what happens um, because a lot of podcasts fall off um and a lot of people actually that you speak to that are famous podcasts now you ask them it's like what is your recipe for podcasting success and every single person i've asked has said the exact same thing which is like kind of like whoa but it's a hundred percent of the time the response i've gotten is i didn't quit or something to that effect i kept going <laughs> and it's yeah. literally just that it's like yeah. when you look at the number of yeah. podcasts that are out there Recently, we got this award as the Inspired Evolution top 2% of podcasts in the world. And my wife was like, this is amazing. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> She's like, why? <laughs> and I was like, because a lot of people start and don't finish and they're in that 100%. You know? So that's like 50% of podcasts probably. So yeah. really, you know, but obviously I'm being self-deprecating. But a yeah. lot of people don't, like, don't keep going. And there's a recipe for success in there with podcasts. So... I realize I've digressed coming back to the answering your question was, um, yeah. So we started with, it was an interesting time. Actually, I'll give you the full story. So my wife, um, she's a dentist and she had this moment in her life where she, they kind of say at the ages between 27 and 30, you have what they call a Saturn's return for those that are into astrology. Um, for those that aren't into astrology, basically it's a time where, and I'm definitely not an expert in this year guys. So I just, bear with me, but Saturn apparently in your astrological chart is back where it started when you were born. Yeah. And it happens again when you're between 54 and 60, which is when we're known to have a midlife crisis. Right. So you kind of have this quarter life crisis at 27, 30, yeah, roughly speaking. Now, Saturn is responsible for purpose is what they say. Astrologically, it drives a chariot, which pulls the sun and the sun of your life. The light of your life is the reason and the purpose that you're here. So, Potentially that was what was going on. It seems to fit the narrative. My wife had this existential crisis going, there's got to be more to my life than filling holes in people's teeth. Like there just has to be, you know, uh, going to work, waking up, filling holes in people's teeth and going back home mm -hmm. going to bed, waking up, doing the same thing. And so she went on basically what we could now call a sabbatical. Back then she just basically left and was, we didn't really have the linguistics of like well, the word sabbatical in our mind. She was just, I'm leaving. And so she left for, we didn't know it was an indefinite amount of time. We thought it was going to be roughly a year. It ended up being about 10 months. In that time, we went traveling for the first six weeks together. And then she set sail on her sabbatical. I came home and I just, you know, continued to work. Now, it was the first time that I sort of worked, like lived on my own with our dog. And, you know, she was away traveling. And it was very lonely. It was a winter, <laughs> you know, winters are good for cuddles and there was none of that. Um, so it was a, it was a hard time to say the least. Um, and then also work was really, really intense. And often, as you'll know, between you two, oftentimes when one part of the partnership is going through something, it's often that energetically you guys are connected that the other part is going through something as well. Right. Like we know that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. Yeah, and so, and it's, it's interesting, like the quantum behind all of that, they're starting to research some of that stuff is really like trippy, but well, that's very, another very conversation. Yes. We'll totally digress even into rabbit holes we won't return from. But nonetheless, so she's away and I'm starting to have this existential crisis as well, yeah, which is like because I'm the same age and the same experience and we're connected and I'm like, there's yeah. got to be more to just... And I literally felt like if you guys have seen the movie, The Matrix, it's one of my favorite movies. Um, yeah. I started feeling like a human battery cell that is running the corporate machine, basically. Yeah. And I was like, there's got to be more to life than this. Like, there's just, you know, this is really rubbing me up the wrong way. And I was giving myself to it daily, daily, daily. And in 
there was a moment before I left my wife, what for her to go on a sabbatical when we went six weeks traveling, we were sitting in Guatemala um, in San Marcos on this really beautiful jetty. And there was this really beautiful place. I saw more shooting stars this one night than I had seen Ooh. in my whole life put together. It was one of those moments. It was yeah. New Year's Eve. It was just <laughs> like, pff, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. And I've never really set a New Year's resolution because I thought it was always a bit cheesy. Like, I've always been into personal development. I was like, New Year's resolution, like that's for, you know, the, mm. the, the those that play in the kiddie pool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That was kind of my egotistical spiritual judgment. Um, so I never really set an, uh, a goal. But this year I had the intention. I set an intention. This, this voice just do more of what you love. And that's all it said to me. It was like, do more of what you love. So I was like, okay. And I came back and I was, you know, in this grind, working through all of this, you know, existential angst almost of like being yeah. in this corporate machine. And and there was this do more of what you love. And one of the things I had managed to do when I was in Guatemala also was I, I quit alcohol. And it was really interesting coming home to not have alcohol and also have this intention of do more of what you love. And I remember I was sitting opposite a computer screen in my living room and the, it used to be that, you know, the dining table and the computer used to be my setup. I was always working on my business. It was like my, you know, happy place. And my wife would be sitting on the couch, you know, doing her thing. And I remember watching this Tony Robbins video, blah, 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 and going, oh, like breakthrough. And then I had that moment of aha. And I turned to her to say, oh my God, I just realized. And then I realized she wasn't there. Hey, yeah. And the, 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 the emptiness inside was like, oh, man. But, again, how everything sort of cascades. In that moment, I had this sort of what we now call in my community here a mandala moment, this sort of cascading of clink, 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 like when the safe, like all the ratchets sort of clicking and the safe door opens, the epiphany, the insight, it happened. We were travelling in Mexico. I saw this club called Mandala, which was an amazing name, and I thought it was sacrilegious to call a club that because Mandala is a very sacred word, and I'm not sure if sacred stuff happens in clubs from my experience anyway. Um, And the other idea of like the other average, (laughs) where the average of five people we spend our time with, um, I had given up alcohol and Friday night drinks was my favorite thing to do. I had one idea when I first moved to Melbourne that I was going to do like Friday night cocktails at my house at some point, which never actually happened. So all this stuff started to drop in and it was just like, oh, you have three hours, create a Facebook group called Mandala Moments, yeah, and invite people over to your house every week. And it was like, nah, every fortnight, mm, once a month. Okay, every fortnight. Okay, every fortnight. And what are you going to do? We're basically going to watch Tony Robbins videos and have aha moments together. I've always wanted to do this, right? Um, Watch TED Talks, watch Mind Valley Talks, watch, you know, any of this sort of content that's inspiring. And then we can unpack it together as a community. And it was became chai, chats and community. I brewed chai to supplace to replace and supplement alcohol instead of no, no longer out, like no longer drinking. So it was an alcoholic free thing that I was doing every fortnight. And it just created the event and I invited, and this was the other big piece, I invited the five people in my community that were inspiring to me. Yeah, so I invited people that, because on the average of the five people I spend my time with, I knew at work that I wasn't going to be that person, right? Like my work was very challenging yeah, for, in terms of the people that I was around. But I knew that in my downtime, even then I wasn't consciously spending my time, I was just getting hammered, yeah? So then I was like, okay, let's try and find speakers authors my yoga teacher was one of the first people like these people that really inspired me to be a more spiritual better human so i invited these people and lo and behold they started rocking up first week there was two of them next week next fortnight there was one of them the fortnight after five people showed up and then the word started getting around and people started showing up to my living room to the point where regularly there was 20 to 25 people in my living room and we would you know discuss carl Jung's archetypes yeah, and then we'd go around the room and call out the archetypes we saw in each other. You know, then we discuss dreams, you know, then we talk about vulnerability. We talk about, you know, all sorts of like career stuff, relationship stuff, like family stuff. You know, you name it. And we started unpacking it together as a community. And there, there was this voice in the community which was like, hey, like, hey you should record these chats. They're invaluable. Yep. And my response to them was, they're invaluable, yes, because there's no fucking microphone yeah, 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 in the yeah, room yeah. because it's a sacred container. It's a yeah. sacred yeah. space. We're sharing from this, like, really safe space amongst each other. There's trust. 
the minute you put a microphone in it, it leaks that trust. And so it's like, I can't do it. And so they kept pushing. I kept saying no. And then eventually they were like, you seriously have to do this. And then a mentor appeared out of nowhere and basically said, hey, like, and it was uh, London Real, Brian Rose. And he said, I'm right, about to launch a launch your podcast program, which he charges, I think, about US dollars for. It was insane. And he said, uh, like, you know, broadcast yourself is what he called it, um, which is not too dissimilar to launch your podcast, right? So broadcast yourself. And my friends were like, do a podcast. And I was like, no, 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 no. I could see myself as this sandwich that was just this pure resistance. I was like, no, I've tuned into podcasts. I don't want to do that. And I remember waking up at 3 a.m. and going, just do it. Yeah. I woke up in the middle of night with no idea like why I'd waken up and it was just like, just do it. And I was like, dude, you don't have $10,000 just to spend on like some course, you know, which you don't even know if you want to do. And it's like, listen, all your friends are saying doing it. This person is saying they want you to do it. You respect this person. And that person has subsequently, London Rule has been on some very interesting journey since then. So pardon them for that or whatever they're up to. But, he started but my up. friends were saying it. Yeah, it sounded out amazing, you know. And so, yeah. and then I was like, I'm just resisting. So if I just get out of my own way, which you, yeah. know, you hear people say this is personal <laughs> development, and then the two could just click together. So I gave myself permission to get out of my way, invested a lot of money, and boom, it clicked in together. The rest became history. The podcast began. So that's the origins of the podcast, the com- conversations we were having in my living room and the community that inspired me. And it started off with me just wanting to interview those people that were in my living room. Now it's just blown out to sort of interviewing people from all over the world, which is beyond my wildest imaginations. Of course. Yeah, I, I got both goosebump and a little cheer. So <laughs> very moving. <laughs> Thank you for asking. No, yeah, but about those, all those people, more than 200, I, I tried to count and I was like, ah, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> but, what? You can't count? No, 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 but uh, it, it was a long list. No, I think more than 200 <laughs> yeah, episodes. And um, I was thinking, what? It must also have been a long personal development journey you meet some people you talk with them they they are they are transformational leaders a lot of them the people you interview Mm -hmm. and so can you mention some of them or some of the things that you still oh this one i've taken that into my life Um, Mm. yeah there's there's quite a few responses to that question of course Um, and I get off this. I get asked this question in different ways. Um, the the way you've asked this question, yes, I can answer it. So one of the biggest takeaways for me has been the Marianne Williamson podcast episode, which happened about twelve months ago, and she was running for politics, and she j- had just bowed out of the uni- uh, USA um, candidature for um, running for office, and she wrote a. Return to Love, which was a sort of dissertation on A Course in Miracles. She's an, like an amazing, amazing spiritual leader, but full of yang, yeah, not like stuck in yin. So she's incredible. And one of the things that I took away from her podcast with conversation was, and I'm butchering the living daylights out of it, which is unfortunate, but she basically went to the effect of saying power without love is corrupt. And love without power is anemic. And for some reason, I really needed to hear that. Like that was huge for me because there was always this, you know, my whole journey is spiritual entrepreneurship, spiritual entrepreneurship, spiritual entrepreneurship. But this sort of reclaiming of power, power just had this, I had these connotations around greed and ego that were in power. And yeah she reminded me that that isn't necessarily power yeah like power is this very pure sort of force that is just a very beautiful masculine force that is available to us to harness accomplishment of things um and it's and that reconciliation was huge for me um yeah left a very profound impact and so what that meant for me was to double down on all the things that I'm doing, because it was very, you know, the inspired evolution has this soft that rainbow colored energy. It's, you know, it's like, Hey, like inspired evolution, like we're going to get there. Don't stress, you know, but she invited this not stress, but it's like, we're going to get there. Yeah. You're ready. Mm. You know, this different sort of like, uh-huh. 
and it's already happened. Let's go. Yeah. And yeah. it's this real, and it was a real, um, it was very, it was medicinal for me to receive that. Now, one of the other questions in line with what um, I get is like on a personal level, like what have you learned in terms of your own organization, running a, like running a podcast for five years and all this sort of stuff? Um, you know, what, what is, what has been one of the biggest takeaways for you? And the recurring lesson again and again, the big takeaway that having interviewed 250, 240, 250 stories now um, is that people are in, like, these people are all inspiring other people's evolution. What I've learned is that it, our biggest challenges yeah. form our biggest gifts. Yeah. So I know that when I podcasted you guys and you guys set sail and started traveling around the world, we spent a lot of time in our podcast talking about what were some of the challenges that were the linchpin to you going, you know what, finally, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> you know, pardon the French. It's not French, but you know what I mean? Like, pardon my, pardon my yeah. language. And it's like that story is again and again my challenges six years of depression brought me to meditation now it's something i heal like i don't want to say heal the world with it but like it's it's something that has healed me that i offer the world that's probably the right way to put it right meditation is something completely changed my life then career misalignment yeah i spent like more than a decade doing that yeah and the friction of that was painful yeah but then that birthed the inspired evolution right yeah. and that became my gift to the world yeah, so your biggest challenges equal your biggest gifts. Yeah, we look and look at any like great leaders. They've like really struggled, and they've walked through that dark night of the soul, and they've come back with this sword from the hero's journey, having slayed the dragon and gone, boom! This is the sword. What can I do for you, society, with this sword? And they learn to serve others with it, right? And that has brought them to greatness. So that has been a massive lesson for me, which I has been in some like the value of that you know, as a young man in his 30s to know that any challenge I'm facing is a blessing in disguise, you know, what that does for you and your resilience is, you know, I, I can't even put that into words. It's been phenomenal. And then on a mundane level, like another lesson that I've learned is the power of consistency. We talked about this a little bit earlier, not giving up. Yeah. Producing yeah. a podcast for five years every week, it's probably one of the most yeah, it's it, honestly outside of my relationship with my wife, like which is a conscious relationship that I chose, this podcast is something that I have been consistent with the longest, <laughs> you know? Um, like my friends I'll see sporadically. Even my family I'll see sporadically. My wife I see all the time. This podcast I see every week. <laughs> yeah. So it's outside of that. Consistency builds what is this thing that no one I find talking about is momentum. With consistency, you build momentum. And momentum, with the laws, you know, it's it's the laws of physics. Something that's moving, it takes just as much energy to stop it. So if it's moving, the universe doesn't want it to stop. It wants it to keep moving. And it just keeps moving and moving and moving and moving and moving. Yeah, it took ages for it to get off the ground. But once it did, now it can't be stopped. I had a question. I have to remember it now. <laughs> yeah. Now, I was thinking about this um how our greatest challenges become our greatest hmm, learning motors or uh, mm. driving energies coming out with the sword um mm. we also have the concept post-traumatic growth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like reverse to the the post-traumatic stress and i was just thinking about those who don't like, so I have the mindset, if there is a challenge, I'm learning something and I'll come out stronger. Um, we have a saying, I'm always happy. If I'm not happy, I'm happy. I'm learning something that will make me happier. Mm. So, so when you have this mindset, the challenging, challenging moments or elements, they are easier, not easy because then when we mm. challenge but some people to me, seems to not get this to kind of drown and i would like to um help them yeah that's what i do i'm a psychologist and a coach as well but mm. i'm interested as i'm speaking to a colleague <laughs> mm. 
what kind of life was um, like what is it called like these things you throw at, um life bills burnings? yeah yes. life bills life bills do you send out throw out for people who don't really believe this yet yeah and once again like it's a it's a great question so once again i rest in because i i've actually got those people in my life like those are some of the closest people in my life um yeah. To the point where one may even argue that a whole impetus for me to be the individual that I am looking to consistently grow is because there are people around me that potentially need to grow, and this is, sounds like a judgment, but uh, mm. refuse to. Now, one of the things in there is, and this has happened, right, like you continue to change and grow, you can change and grow and change and grow, and it may not happen overnight, but five years later someone turns around and goes, oh, you oh, like, oh, you've changed. <laughs> and it's like, mm. yeah, I chose not to be that way. And then you see them sort of go, it was a choice? Like, yeah. this is a cho this is, this is a choice, <laughs> you know? And you can see them short circuit, <laughs> you know, because it's like their brain. But it took five years of me working on myself, in some instances, for that person to have that penny drop moment. Now, If I was trying to hand that person a life, but I don't have five years worth of patience, I'm going to be straight up with your sister. Like, I don't have five years worth of patience. Not with other yeah. people. Like, no. I'm part of the millennial generation. We, we, yeah. we don't yeah. have five years worth of patience. But, I, again, rest in the knowing that as, you know, I continue to evolve and change, that the ripple will happen in some space, way, shape, shape or form, yeah? Now, the other part that is huge for me is as a coach having to learn to realize that everybody's got coping mechanisms yeah because we're dancing between order and chaos at any given time and there is like <laughs> there is a great deal of chaos life is like oh, yes. a mystery yeah like the fact that i am here having this conversation with you two Like if you start to pick at the thread of chaos you can start very quickly coming apart at the seams yeah like what the is going on like what is this thing that is called life yeah like and where do we go after here and how did we get here and who are we connected to and what are we doing we're having conversations what like it's super trippy and yet that is completely balanced by order yeah our psychology our minds navigate the world with patterns recognition of those patterns and order so we get this order that helps support us navigate this chaos this 3d reality yeah which is an amazing gift of consciousness now we are supported by our coping mechanisms yeah and many of them end up outdated and we don't put them in the recycle bin and hit trash yeah and we continue to carry them around but i know even now as i'm speaking to you i run the risk of sounding enlightened when i have plenty of outdated limiting belief systems myself that i'm actively working on trying to trash yeah 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 it's not it's not a walk in the park necessarily yeah and so when I, when i see someone else that's not willing to, that is basically that is basically like not willing to take on one of my like i guess expanded thought concepts I understand that their what I perceive as limited is not limited for them. At some part for them, that was the best coping mechanism that they could find and they dropped into that. And it still continues to serve them to some degree, which is why they yeah. continue to stay in that loop. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, to some point, there's going to be a point where they're going to their biggest challenge is going to be their biggest gift. Yeah, so they're going to hit a challenge and then hopefully they'll evolve out of it. Now, it's hard to sort of say that out loud in public because it's like, shit, you're wishing people challenges. And it's like, well, that's transformation, right? Like you grow that way. Now, some people won't, I'm circling back to your question, it's like some people meet those challenges and they just fall into the pity parade and they just fall into the victim mindset and they're still the mm -hmm. victim of life. Mm -hmm. That helped them early on, right? That helped them early on. And yeah, they continue to live in that model. And that still continues to serve them in some way, right? And sometimes that's hard to acknowledge because sometimes it's not even that person's fault. Like I know what this sounds like. Everybody's empowered for their own choices, but it may not even be that person's fault. When that person goes into their little, I don't, there's a better way of putting this. Part of me, it sounds insensitive when I say this, but pity party, if they go into their pity party or their victimhood is probably the right way to put it, right? Yeah. If they go into their victim state, yeah, other people respond to them. 
and they go, hey, what's wrong? Hey, yeah, are you yeah, okay? Yeah. And it's normal because we're human, we're compassionate. But that continues to enforce that person's behavior, right? Because that person is looking for connection and that's how they find connection. So it's still serving them. So how can we disrupt that, right? Without disrupting the entire... Fundamentum. Yeah, the things that are circling around that nucleus, right? The electrons and the protons and all of that, right? Like it's like, it's all that, the yeah, you know? So there's there's that, there's that process. So yeah. I I rest in knowing that it's like, you know, that age old saying, which was kind of like, I, I was smart, so I tried to change the world, but now I'm wise and I just try to change me. And so that is kind of what I rest in and just trusting that me doing that is hopefully, you know, having an impact in the world in some way, but I, I, I'm trusting that the impact that it has on me is more than enough, <laughs> yeah, because that then ripples out in other places. And I'll give you a practical example of that. Like recently, um, I've, I've been coaching for quite some time now and for about six weeks just prior to now, I've been through some really, like some real challenges and they weren't necessarily me, but they were in my community here in Melbourne and I just checked out. Like I, you know, I was just like, hey, like, I'm sorry guys, but I can't, you know, I can't do this. And it was hard for the ego because, is you're the coach you're meant to be the one that helps people stay aligned and you're kind of off the rails for a minute here and i didn't know when i was coming back on the rails now i'm back on the rails <laughs> it's all good right but i didn't know when i was coming back on the rails and i checked out and now i've checked back in and i'm subsequently catching up with all my clients and they're like i'm so glad you took that time off and i was like oh you don't enjoy coaching <laughs> and they're like no because actually there are places in my life where things have happened and I've needed to step back, but I don't because I continue to have to put the log on the fire. And you consciously taking a step back, knowing that everything was, you know, going to suffer because of it from your mind's perspective, like business-wise, but yet you still chose to prioritise yourself and your own well-being, that spoke volumes to me as your coaching client. And I was like, oh, shit, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Thank you, you so much for that reflection. And that wasn't one person. There was, there was three people that said that back to me. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, wow, you know, we're having that ripple effect and we don't even know that we're doing it. Right? We're just be like, well, I'm just looking after myself. I'm just trying to look after myself. Yeah. But it's having that impact. Touch wood. I have a question about uh, ego uh, because I feel it sometimes mm. myself, you know. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sitting here in a black boy and shirt, <laughs> like, hey, look at me. <laughs> mm. But, 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 uh, yeah, I'm starting to, I'm turning 48 this year. I'm starting to just accept who I am in some ways. Mm. But part of me can be a little like, oh, uh, telling about our lives, starting a podcast, ah. Uh, Will it nurture too much that ego part where, oh, I'm doing it because I want people to like me, uh, that, that uh, little child inside of me? Or how do you work with that? Or is that a problem for you? I don't know. Absolutely. It's a huge one. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge one. Um, and I, if I'm honest with you, one of the big, I think everybody's here to work on something in this life. One of the big things for me is ego. Yeah, one of the huge things for me is ego. And so... You know, and I've even, and this is where the power and love was this huge thing. And uh, anyway, I'm conscious of the time, but yeah. like keep even the part of me that keeps pushing for humility. I was like, humble, stay 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 humble. Who the fuck are you? Stay humble. <laughs> oh, you're my ego. <laughs> <laughs> trying to push me into staying yeah. humble, trying to come across as humble because the reality of the power of life is that life just is. You don't need to be humble. But if you're forcing yourself, which I consistently still do, there's a part of my ego that is going, be humble. Oh, you only need to be humble because you're egoic, yeah? Humble, yeah. egoic, humble, egoic. Yeah. And so, yeah, there is that dance, yeah? But to answer your question with the podcast, and I'm going to, I'm conscious of the time, so I'm going to try and keep this short. But rest in your values. So connection, contribution, and celebration, there is no ego in that for me. It is my, it is the, those, that's the celebration of my, my spiritual value. Like that is what my spirit's essence is. That's what I'm here to do. Connect, contribute, celebrate. So if as long as I'm doing it, it's going to feel great. Yes, but it's deeper than an ego great. It's, it's deeper than happiness. It's joy. Yeah. It's a spiritual like, yeah, yeah, yeah like that's, it goes all the way in. 
Yeah. Yeah. And that's from your soul, not from your head. Now, one of the, this is a parable that I learned recently from a gentleman that I had on the podcast, Michael Mead. He is, if you're looking for a great podcast on mysticism, guys, he is my hands down. One of the podcasts I listen to most, Michael Mead, uh, living myth podcast. He was telling a story about diving for pearls. So there's some obvious metaphors here. At the bottom of the darkest place in the ocean, you find this thing that is pure white light. Yeah, it is a pearl. So in your deepest darkness, you find light. Yeah, so shadow work and light he's talking about. He also talks about something that's a bit more modern in terms of the myth. So he talked about how in order to go diving for the pearl, you need two divers. You need one that sort of stays close to the surface and you need one that does the deep diving into the shadows for the pearl. And the top one's responsibility is to pull the bottom diver up so he doesn't die, yeah, because it's a it's a dangerous expedition and if he spends too much time down there, yeah, he needs to pull him back up. He's his life raft, right? So the way he describes it is this is your soul, the deep diver. He dives deep. He experiences life's challenges, comes back with the pearl that is the gift, yeah, like it's that's the journey. But the ego, which Western society loves to demonize in many ways, has its role as an intermediary, as a filter for this experience between the soul realm and the 3D realm up above, which is where the pearl inevitably has to go back to (laughs) into the world to provide its value. Yeah. So there is this relationship with ego, which, you know, it has a mediating role in experience now left unchecked and sort of run rampant. Yeah. It becomes toxic real fast. Right. But if it does have a role to play, it's about having a healthy relationship with it. um, I believe. And I find that metaphor really positive for me because it helps me sort of find my place helps me come back to center kind of going oh yeah there's my ego and it does have a role yeah Uh, because let's be real like standing up in front of a stage of like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people yeah it's absolutely challenging because some part of my ego goes this is epic yeah of course yeah remember what your content is yeah yeah and can you feel the butterflies that's because this is really important for them to receive it's not about you yeah yeah and I'll share something with you in the essence of keeping things on point. When I was going to give one of my biggest talks um, in Europe, before that, there was a gentleman that I podcast. His name's Murray Kyle, and he's a beautiful musician here in um, in Melbourne. And uh, I haven't actually shared this with anyone before, and I'm hoping he finds it okay that I share this. Um, Touch wood. Thank you so much, brother. He, um, He basically, I said to him, when he creates these concerts, it's like there's a dynamic, like there is no audience in him. It is just one experience. And afterwards, people are coming up and just thanking him. They are literally like moving stuff in the audience, like the energy, the healing, like it's profound, yeah? His music is amazing. And I said to him, and I watched him because we've helped host him, and then it was just the most, like it was just, it wasn't even an effort to be humble. Like it was just like, thank you so much. You know, it was just, he was just graceful. So the next morning I was like, you know, I really want to learn kind of what his thoughts on what the question you asked me is like ego and humility and I said to him I was like hey brother like you know when all these people are coming up to you and thanking you how do you navigate this experience like how do you stay humble and he thought about it and I'll never forget it well he drank his coffee put it down we reflected and he goes you know actually Amrit the music works best when I am also just an instrument And I was like, okay. And he goes, and yeah, so when people are thanking me, I'm thanking the creator of the music and where the music comes from and the music. And I'm thanking also in their gratitude that I get to be an instrument, you know, and that I get to be part of this amazing dance and this amazing experience. And that's been huge for me. You know, when people thank me, I take that thanks and I also give thanks to creation for, you know, this amazing opportunity to be alive and to be able to share in such an amazing gift that is life, you know, it really is a gift. We, there's, you know, in many ways, it's a long journey. In many ways, it's a dash. <laughs> yeah. And it's a miracle that we're here. So yes, yeah. really hopefully that helps. To change the topic completely as uh, we should 
Yeah. We should land this interesting. We could talk for like six hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But I had this idea. Yeah. How about we commit? Because we talked about commitment and consistency, mm. yeah. which is very interesting. Um, we could commit our episode number something to talk to Amrit again. That could be cool. It could be a good hook for us. And uh, maybe it could be fun for you as well to see where we I are. I would love to. Episode 100 or something like that. Like, not not just down the road in October, no, no, no. but, you know. Would that be fun? Oh, my God. It would be my honor. <laughs> would that be fun? <laughs> it would Let's be my number honor. 100. It's also number like episode number 100. Yeah, yeah. Then we talk Absolutely. again. Because I, I feel, you know, it's very interesting, but it could be for six hours, as I said, and maybe we should mm. um, take a long one. one just uh, land it on. Just my- go there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I appreciate it. That's a good place. That is, if you're if you're on a weekly cadence, that's at about the two year mark. That gives yeah. you some perspective. Yeah, yeah. But it's a good. Rock it's a good. Plan. But we might be yeah. getting make up to Australia before, and uh, then we can talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the podcast will be there. I. I'm on it. I'll be there. Podcast right. 100. It was yeah. a big, big pleasure, Amrit, and we mm. will um, say thanks a lot. And thank you, uh, thank you for being there. And oh, for guys. people listening in, uh, please check out Inspired Evolution. And if you yourself dream of starting a podcast or getting coached by this wonderful man, uh, you know where to go. Just go to inspiredevolution.com. Thank you. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed today's episode, and if you liked that, then please share it with all your friends and family. We would also love it if you gave our podcast a review. Thanks. And if you want to support our podcast and work, then you can find us on patreon.com slash the Conrad family. We will continue to travel full time, and if you want to tag along, then please follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the Conrad family. And you can also read more than 100 blog posts on our website, theconrad.family. Until next time, make a wonderful day. Thank you.